Hello there! Welcome to uh, John Braxton's Make Things at the Shack Makerspace here in Kokomo, Indiana. Today we're going to show you how to make an inexpensive project that you can do in an afternoon uh, for at least under $20 because of things. Uh, lift it up Braxton, show them what we're going to make today. This sweet blanket quilt Bring it down. Holder thing. Yeah, I know the cameras, but yes. So it's basically a ladder that you put in the corner of your room that holds some blankets. And it looks nice. That's what we're going to show you how to make here at the shack here in Kokomo, Indiana. And you're like wondering yourself, I watch these videos all the time of quick DIY crafts that I can make at home. And you're just like, I really want to do that. But then you start thinking about it. Yeah, it's going to cost $15 worth of material, but now I don't have a miter saw. That's $200. I don't have a drill press. That's another $200. I don't have this. I don't have that. And you're just like, I don't want to make that $15 project and spend $1,000 in tools. Or even if you go to Harbor Freight, $400 in tools. We have a solution for you today. And that is this place, the Shack Makerspace here in Kokomo, Indiana. It is a membership-based work shop maker space. So what that means to you is it's $35 a month for an individual person to come in and have access to all these tools. All the tools that you'll see in this video that we're using is actually here at the shack that you can use for a monthly membership. It is 24 hours a day open. You get a key fob, you walk in and out whenever you need to. Me and Braxton are usually here during the day. So if you have any questions that you need answered, uh, we also have laser, we have a Glowforge here that you can use. We have a CNC router. We have 3D printers. We have uh, ceramics. We have fiber arts and sewing machines and crickets and all that other stuff and plenty of workspace so you can do your project. All you gotta do is just get a membership, which the link for on the description for more information and the Facebook thing will be under the description below. And then just hit us up, get you signed up, and then you come on in and make things. You have anything to add? Nope, I did that pretty well, I think. So let's get into this video. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, our one piece of two by four, uh, which is eight foot long. We're gonna find the center, which is four foot. So how you do that, you got a tape measure, right? Hit that, mark four foot, which I already did on this, but we'll just do it again. Make sure that this tape measure is the same. And then you're going to take your dowel rods that you have, which is the one, one inch poplar, four foot long. Yep, there you go. Four foot long. So we're going to find the center of that, which is two foot, which I already marked. But then what we're going to do is we're going to set up a stop on the saw. So you only set it once and then boom, saw, saw, and you're good to go. So let's go, let's go get to cutting. Cool. So we're over here at a radial arm saw, which is super cool, also super dangerous, but if you know what you're doing, it's not that big of a deal, and it cuts really nice and really square. So this saw at the makerspace is set up and actually indicated in perfectly square, so we don't mess with angles on this. All this does is cut nice, perfect 90s really deep. So we have our mark here on our, well, we have two marks, because this board is not exactly 96, which is eight feet. So I'm gonna try and split these marks right down the middle so we have two equal size pieces. So I'm gonna line it up by eye first. And if I have to, if I cut it a little bit off, I can flip everything around and even everything up, but we're gonna go with this right here. So hand on the saw before it starts so that it doesn't jump and kick and come yanking right back at you. Here we go. a little bit off. So we're going to take a little more off in this one. So we got our dowel rods over here. We're going to put these at one foot apart on our uh, ladder. So we need three total rungs. We're going to cut these to uh, around two feet. It's not, uh, it doesn't really matter what the dimension is, more that they're all the same. So we're going to use what's called a stop on the saw, 
and a clamp works just fine. What this does allow you to repeat a cut with the same dimension over and over again. So when we put a new dowel in, all we gotta do, bump it against our stop, cut, and we have the exact same size. So this pink on the end is going into the two by four with a hole, so I'm not worried about cutting that off, so we're just gonna cut these just like this. Next up, we gotta do some layout here on these so we know exactly where we're gonna put our rungs. I got these boards lined up. They're even on both ends, so all I gotta do is throw my tape right down the middle. I'm gonna mark one foot, two foot, three foot. Then we're gonna use this cool speed square. <laughs> super, super cool. It'll give you a nice straight line. You're just gonna line up that right there. Put your pencil, mark, crack right across. Now that means now we know where our mark's supposed to be. So when we line these back, put these both together with the dowel rods, it'll be nice and level and straight. It's, it's gonna look like you're basically building a ladder. Um, so that's how it is. And then we're gonna go over to the drill press where we're gonna use a Forstner bit and cut out, hog out the holes for where the dowel rods go in and we can glue them up. We got our layout marked on our boards. We have a fence set up on our drill press, which is why we didn't have to mark the centers here. All we gotta do is bump it up against our fence here, which is just set with a tape measure, lining it up from the center point of the drill bit to the back of this fence. So we know we're good on the center there. We gotta line up our line and drill a hole. Now, the other thing we have set up is a depth stop and this keeps the Forstner bit from plunging all the way through and it keeps the bottom of the hole there keeps the bottom of the hole the same on every piece cool so Forstner bits are pretty cool they create a flat bottomed hole instead of a twist drill like this that kind of it's got a pointy end and some of the other drill bits have like a cone shaped into it uh, and Forstner bits make really nice holes so, here we go. All right, we're going to do a quick sanding on this to kind of get any splinters, the burrs off of it, and get the uh, uh, pencil marks off of this so I'm just gonna hit it with like I think I got 80 grit sandpaper or maybe like 120 grit just a quick sanding is what we're gonna do and then we'll uh, we're not gonna go up to a thousand to make it like glass smooth I mean you can do that if you want but this this is gonna hold blankets in the corner of a room don't need to do that so let's get into it Now we're done sanding. Let's get to the router, ta table. The router table. We're gonna just uh, finish up these edges. We're just doing a little bit of a nice little touch up that you can do or you don't have to do. We like the router table, so that's what we're gonna do. All right, see the square edges here? When this is standing up like that, we really don't wanna have a hard edge. So we got a quarter inch round over bit set up in our router table here. All we're gonna do is knock that square edge off and make it nice and smooth. Here we go. Uh, headphone users, beware, because this is very loud. Okay. okay, so we got everything rounded off, sanded up, we're ready to put everything together. So we're using bar clamps uh, to, once we get these glued up, where we get the rungs glued in here, we can uh, screw them down and it'll keep it compressed while the glue dries. So we're all lined up 
basically. Yep, and when you do this, you want to start at one end and work your way to the next end. So, it, so it's easier to push in on the thing as you go. Yep. So let's just light this flat, blue. Or you can go up, down. Because whatever's easiest for you. We make them sound good. That's right. Why can't we just glue them all and stick them on, stick it on top, Mr. Braxton? Yeah. That's good. Here, hand me glue. Let's just do that. Bring this down on the bar clamp like so, keeping it compressed so it doesn't come up on you. And then you're going to want to line, you want to put them in the middle between the runs so it compresses on both sides. Yep. And you just compress those bad boys like so. And we're not very square, so we may not be square. Now you can see, while we're gluing it up, it kind of shifted over. So what we're going to do is make sure that these are square. Here, I'll hold this. That's pretty close. And then just make sure it's square because you want it to look nice when it's sitting. You don't want something all wonky. Set it on the ground. Set it on the ground. Oh, do you want it with the bar clamps? No. Nope. Nope. Down. Ah, that's another one. Cool, that's not too much. It's not gonna stay. Hold it like that, and I'll clamp it. Okay, cool. Can you hold it like that? So, as you can see, we have to do something <laughs> on the fly, but you know, it's whatever works out to get the result that you need. Right. Nothing ever is gonna just work out perfectly. And me and Braxton have been working together for a while now and have discovered that anything that we touch does not go perfectly or easily. Uh, it basically makes us want to hate our lives when we work on things. <laughs> Grab this thing. And then what you get to do now is wait and watch it dry. Um, this, uh, this glue has about working time of probably about four hours to where it's kind of, it's good. I mean, you can kind of work on it now as set, but you want to give it a good 24 hours of set time uh, to get it done. So we'll come right back at you when the glue's dry. We're going to stain it up and finish up this project. We're ready to stain. We're ready to stain. We're going to use this pretty, uh, I don't know, read it off. <laughs> Vintage Aqua. It's a very thing. Fast dry wood stain. Dries in an hour, achieves a good color in one coat, covers pretty well. And how you do wood stain is brush on, wipe off. Well, that's one way. That's one way. There's no real right There's, or wrong. Yeah. As long as you're, you get the desired look that you want, by golly, you do it the way you want to do it. There's, yeah. But what we're going to do is a, a brush on. If it gets too cooly. Interrupted by the air. It's not a wood. It's not a real wood shop channel unless you get interrupted by the air compressor. <laughs> Soon we'll have an outdoor air compressor for the shack here, and uh, 
we're going to have to worry about that. So let's get going on this. Let's see how this is going to look. And I mean, you just, it looks like paint. <laughs> there we go. That's a pretty looking stain. Here, I can do it. No. I'll get this side if you want to get that. Let it soak in there, then wipe it off. Because, like, I don't know if you can see on camera, but this, it'll lay down like paint. So you just want to wipe it off. And you can be messy with this. It's not like you're just trying to get the whole wood coated. Normally, we don't do like a color. Uh, ah, me and doing this more. Yeah, me and Braxton, we're we're more like a traditionalist. Like wood should look like wood. But you know what? I'm not. I'm not hating this. I'm with you. Cause I like how it, like the grain kind of pops it out. And it hides your mistakes. Cause there's all this color people can look at. <laughs> like you did mistakes. Me. Exactly. There's no mistakes. But like you did such a good job. Yes. Yes I did. But when you get into like a high gloss finish and stuff like that, that's when you want to make sure you don't have any mistakes. Because the glossier the finish, the more mistakes it shows. So if you want to hide mistakes or, or imperfections, you want to use a matte. Any matte product will work because it kind of hides it. Not completely, or dark. Dark hides holes. So we're just, we are, oh, you're going to have to pour some more in this. Yes. Well, Braxton puts more of that in. Kind of do a little history lesson of John and Braxton, two fat guys making stuff. <laughs> Please like, comment, subscribe on this channel. Uh, it's probably going to be our second video uploaded. We also are doing this at the Shack Makerspace. Um, so this is Shack is a makerspace located in Kokomo, Indiana. And what that means, it's, it's a membership based workspace. So basically you can, you pay $35 a month and you have access to the tools. Um, so you don't have to go out and buy your own table saw or miter saw or anything like that to do it. You just buy your own material, bring it into the shack. We're usually here every day. So one of us can help you if you have any questions. There's other, all these other experts and other things and 3D printing, laser design, uh, fiber arts. So uh, sewing and crocheting and any kind of that deal is here at the shack. So if you have any questions, just hit us up in the comment or go to the shack's uh, Facebook page, which is going to be in the description below. And then also, I'll tell you a little bit about my, myself, is I started my woodworking carpentry career uh, in high school where I did the absolute bare minimum to get my diploma. And that means the bare minimum in wood shop or what in, in English and math and did all electives. So I was wood shop, metal shop, um, theater construction, art like pottery, mark making. So ceramics is the fancy term for pottery making. So, and then just had my own home tools that kind of got out of it. And then bought a house here in Kokomo, Indiana. Then I was like, what is this place? One of my buddies was working in an event where the shack was at. And uh, 
found out what it was. He told me about it, so I actually came in and stopped in, just came in one day and Braxton was sitting there and he gave me the tour and then I signed up. And then that's about where, and that's then me. a no-brainer. All the tools that you're seeing in this video today are all available. We're, the, the, we're the cheapest makerspace in the Midwest and have an entire wood shop. That yes, we have, not. we have a wood shop, we have a laser, we have a CNC router, we have ceramics, we have fiber arts, we have 3D printers. I mean, we got it all here at the makerspace here in Kokomo, Indiana. So if you ever, if you want to, I, I highly suggest that you join up. Because right now during this pandemic with things not, you know, you may have some projects you need to get done around the house. And you're just like, I don't want to go and spend the tools on that. Well, guess what? You can bring those projects here, work on them, use the tools, use our knowledge, and get those home projects, that honeydew list, done. Yes, I'm liking how this stain is kind of like a paint, but then when you wipe away, it leaves the grain exposed. It's kind of nice. It's nice. It's a nice. I think there's a name for something like that. What? A stain. Uh, a paint that's like a stain? A, a paint that when you wipe it off, it shows the wood grain. That's called stain? Yes. Mm -hmm. Smart. Right. Shut up. We don't put people down here. <laughs> like we got Except enough. John. <laughs> we have enough stain on this rag to where we can go the rest of the way. Oh, sticker. Oh, no. That's going down. Yep. All right. So we got a coat on there. It looks good on a one coat. Let's hit this. I don't think we have to do another coat on this. No, no, we're gonna let it dry, and then we're gonna show it off. <laughs> and there you have it. Your blanket quilt ladder holder for your home. So it's about $15 worth of materials. Uh, you can make this in an afternoon. And, you, and again, if you need a space to work and the tools you use, check out the maker space here in Kokomo, Indiana. It's called The Shack. It's $35 a month for individual membership and you have access to all the tools and more that you what you saw in the video um, a little insight on this is we did this you you may be asking yourself it's kind of short and it's true uh, if you want to make this yourself I would make it longer but what we were doing was making the absolute cheapest way so we only had to get one two by four cut it down couple of these dollar rods cut, cut it down so that's why it's a little short if you guys are like wondering yourself man that's too short to be a blanket holder but it still works and it still holds blankets so do you have anything no nope. that's the whole thing is you we would make this taller yeah yeah that's yeah. the only thing i well make it taller i'd probably move the top and bottom rungs up a little bit a, higher a little bit spread out and put another rung yeah I don't know, but yeah like five feet would be an awesome yeah height but again <clears throat> it's like 15 dollar craft well, what two by fours now are you're uh, yeah you're gonna save a little money having it only at four feet. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so uh, uh, please consider joining the shack. If you have any questions, just message us, uh, type a comment, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>